Hello! Today we're going to be talking all things um, birth story. So I tried to sit down to film this a few times and honestly I feel like memories are just fading. You know like when you block out a very traumatic experience? Um, that is where I am right now. So I'm like, you know what? Might as well just like film it, talk about it, get it over with. Uh, put it out there and then just move on with my life because it was indeed a very <laughs> traumatic experience. It's been about a month since uh, that experience has happened. Um, yeah, but to preface this, um, I'm very grateful that I got to carry a life, give birth, and we are all alive and healthy and well and we are here um, now. But it was a scary experience and a few of you have messaged me um, on Instagram worried that you might have preeclampsia or you do have preeclampsia and you just wanted to talk about it which I totally understand um, if you need to kind of like talk to someone Estoy aquí um, So yeah, let's, ta <laughs> let's start talking about what the crap happened I go to my 36 week appointment um, to my OBGYN which I love, I absolutely love her, I adore her um, and I sit down and every time the nurse Julie she knows me. They know I've had. By the way, if you don't follow me on Instagram, I, I was pregnant, and I gave birth. So this is the first story. So my nurse Julie, she's been my nurse ever since I got pregnant. So she's literally been through the whole thing with me, and they they sent me through my HG. So like they're very, they know that when I come in, there might be something wrong with me. Okay, so they, they 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 know me very very <laughs> very well. That I'm a 24 year old at the time. I turned 25 two weeks ago, um, and they know that anything could happen to me. So she sees me and she's like, okay. How, how's life? How's everything? And I'm like, Nurse Julie, I gained 17. Was it 17? No, I think it was it was 12 pounds. I'm like, I gained 12 pounds in the past five days. And I feel like an elefante. Um, and I really did. I was so swollen. My legs, like my ankles were like the cankles. Um, I felt like it was just, it was happening again. Like I was very aware of it. I'm like, this is happening again because I had hypertension with my first baby um, and this is my second baby and I just felt like, you know, it's about to go down. I really, really felt it. And actually the weekend before I went in, I messaged my doctor and I was like, hey, um, I think I'm starting to get develop hypertension or preeclampsia, but my blood pressure wasn't super high. So I just wanted to kind of like put it that way. Um, and they actually told me to go to the ER, which in fact I did go to the ER. Um, and then they sent me to labor and delivery and they monitored me for about an hour and a half and then they sent me home and they were like, you are just fine. I was not just fine. I was not. <laughs> uh, but anyway, two days later, I'm at my 36 week appointment um, and I sit down, you know how they do like the routine checks of like blood pressure and blah, blah, blah. So she weighed me and I did in fact gain weight, like quite a bit of weight, like rapid weight within the past couple of days. Um, and then she checked my blood pressure and it was elevated. Um, so she was like, okay, that's not good. And she's like, sit still and we'll remeasure in a couple of minutes. Cause you know, if I was like walking and things like that, which it really shouldn't elevate my blood pressure that high anyway, but we rechecked it and it was again higher. So she was sitting there and she's like, all right, my friend, let me go get the doctor. So the doctor comes back and she's like, your blood pressure is high. It's not like preeclampsia high, which is like above 140 or 150, I think. Um, but it's high and it's really high for me because I usually have, I'm like on the lower end, my, the majority of my pregnancy um, could be because of HG, but my blood pressure was like lower 90s and here it is like upper 130s in the almost 140s. So that's a big jump for me. So basically she said anything like if it's like 30, 30 points higher than your usual, that's high blood pressure for you. And you usually wouldn't really, so if I went in just to the ER, right, and my blood pressure is 139 over like 80 something, they'll be like, oh, that's totally normal. But for someone like me, it is not normal. Um, this is why I think it's so important to see the same provider that you love your entire pregnancy because they know you and they know like your your bases and things like that anyways so she was like that it's elevated so she sent me to um because preeclampsia I'm, I'm sorry if i'm talking super like fast and things like that it's just a very long story so i'm getting i'm going at it um so 
that same appointment she sent me down to do labs and things like that but it was already 4 p.m so she's like i'm not gonna get the results tonight but i will get them tomorrow morning and if my liver enzymes are elevated or if like my um like if my body is ready like my organs are failing then we will induce the next day so that would be december that would be december 8th right no december 7th um, but if it's still okay, she wants me to wait until I'm 37 weeks, so that was like four more days, and then we would induce, right? Because preeclampsia, things could go down really, 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 really fast. Like, you could be, like, okay one day, and then the next day, you're, like, going into liver failure. So, um, yeah, <laughs> I took those tests, and I was on my very way home, um, and I was just, you know, cruising, <laughs> and that same night, I, um, we were sitting upstairs with my husband and my baby, my other baby, <laughs> my first baby, we're sitting upstairs, and I just started feeling really weird, and we're sitting there, and they're watching Cars, and I was just sitting on my chair because I couldn't sleep. Um, like laying down, I slept in a chair. So I was sitting in my, my sleeping chair, my sleepy time chair, and um, I just started feeling really off. And I told Philip, I'm like, Philip, I'm feeling weird. And he's so used to that at this point that he was like, okay. <laughs> and I grabbed my handy dandy blood pressure cuff because I started feeling my, um, it all started with this pinky. Um, I started feeling my pinky going numb. And I was like, okay, Philip, my hand is going numb. And he was like, okay and i was like it's going numb so um let's check my blood pressure so i put the cuff on and as i'm checking my blood pressure i'm feeling my arm just go completely numb i couldn't open it it was just um and then it just kind of almost felt like you know when you fall asleep like your hand falls asleep that's how okay i don't want to talk about it anymore because i feel like it's gonna happen again <laughs> um so um it just felt like it was like tingling all the way up and then my blood pressure cuff was like ding 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 and my blood pressure was like 160 over, it was like 100 or something. So that, that is very high. That is very, very high. And I was sitting there, I'm like, Philip, and I showed it to him. And he was like, get up and go pack your hospital bag. Because I did not pass, pack anything. I didn't pack crap. Because I thought I saw a time, right? I did not. Um, I checked my blood pressure again and it was still high. So I ran into my um, like baby's room and I just started throwing crap into the hospital bag. Mostly all baby stuff because I was like, okay, hey, I'm having a baby now because obviously this is not okay. Um, so I threw in a bunch of um, stuff for the baby. Also, we didn't know if we were having a boy or a girl. So I was like throwing in like pinks and blues and... Um, really threw in a lot of unnecessary things a lot of necessary things i did not throw in um and then above our cabinet where everything was stored we have a mirror and this is where it got a little this is where it got to me and i just completely lost it um i looked into the mirror and i tried to smile and half of my face this half it wouldn't move it was drooping down so when i would smile this side would go up and this side wouldn't and it was just a lopsided smile and i started losing vision in this eye it was oh it was a very very scary moment because first of all when you start experiencing those symptoms you're already scared but when you're heavily pregnant um it's scary because you're like i don't want to lose my baby right so I ran into Philip and I'm like, Philip, I can't smile. And I'm trying to smile for him. And he's uh, he's lost it already at this point. He's freaking out. Um, we were at my parents' house. So he was like, Mom, call 911. Call 911. She's, um, she's like, she looks like she's either having a stroke or she's having a seizure. And then I started losing my vision. Everything is just blurry. I'm seeing doubles. Um, and my nose just starts for the extra effect of like, we are missing like, gory blood here um my nose just starts bleeding really really bad and it wouldn't stop um it's, it's just i'm a mess um and i can't like i'm just i feel like i started hyperventilating too because i'm freaking out i'm being anxious uh my blood pressure is still super high and they call 911 i think it was like only hours after my ov appointment so uh we call 911 the fire trucks come the ambulance comes um, and they come in and they, they were, well, when my mom was on the phone with the 911 peoples, she was like, hey, you need to, they started checking me for like stroke, um, symptoms. So like, you know, speech, saying things over and over again, the whole thing where you go like this and then like, 
that smiling my smile was kind of coming back a little bit um, but the 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 EMTs or whatever, they come in and they're like, okay, you are pregnant, but um, they were looking at me and I was pretty stable. Like my blood pressure would just randomly spike and then it would go down, it would spike and then it would go down. So it wasn't continuously high. And they were like, okay, we're gonna take you to the hospital. Um, but the hospital closest to our house wouldn't be the one that I wanted to give birth at. And I was very specific about giving birth at that one. First of all, because my provider was there. Second of all, it has a NICU. And this baby was coming earlier and I knew that, you know, if anything happens, um, I want the NICU to be in the same place as I am. It's just, I'm, I was always prepared for that. So we drove like, 20 minutes to get to my hospital and while we were driving um, they were monitoring my blood pressure and they had an IV in and it would just randomly spike like it would go down and it would randomly spike and as it was spiking I felt the whole like my eye would give out and like I felt the tingling in like my side um, things like that so it was weird that you know that was happening and I was crying a lot too because because of COVID nobody can join me in the ambulance so it was just me and the sweet guy that was there and he was he was he was really really trying <laughs> to like tell me everything is okay and I really appreciate him because um it was a long drive <laughs> it felt like a forever drive and I was just worried about the baby because I, I don't know what's happening, right? Um, and from everything that I read in preeclampsia, when you have, start having those kind of seizures, it could affect your placenta and then like the, you know, and then that's connected to the baby. So I just wanted to make sure that my seizures were not putting him in distress. And I also haven't felt him kick in like an hour. So I was very worried. <laughs> and Philip is just right behind us on his car. Um, I couldn't see him. You can't like see through the windows when you're in the ambulance. Um, but Philip was right behind us, and the dude was like, "Your husband's, he's, you know, he's speeding. <laughs> he's catching up to us." And I'm like, "Great! <laughs> like, let's not have him get into a car accident because there was, like, the road was just ice. <laughs> it was a snowstorm. Um, perfection." Okay, so we get to the hospital, and they unload me in the ER. And um, they're checking my blood pressure and it's higher like for me it's really high but just for them it's higher um, and thank goodness that my provider my OB she was actually um, in the labor delivery unit and when they messaged her that I was there with all these symptoms she was like bring her up because she knew my, my, my story with my blood pressure. I thought I was gonna have a c-section. Honestly, I thought like, that that is where it's gonna go because I'm already like, I can't see out of one eye. I am like, my eyelids for some reason, um, I'll post pictures like here. My eyelids were super swollen and I think it was because my blood pressure just spiked so high that maybe that's what caused the swelling. Um, I'm not sure, but I had like a really, really bad headache. Um, I was just feeling super nauseous. I was just out of it and I was like, they do not, do they expect me to push a baby out right now? Because I uh, just, I was like, I just cut it out. Like I can't do this, but <laughs> they did in fact inspect, in, expect me to <laughs> deliver a baby unnaturally, which at the time I was like, I was confused and I just, I, I was like, just, I just want a C-section. That was like my mindset. I was like, I'm done. Like I had such an awful pregnancy. I am going through this right now. My body's already exhausted. And I was like, there's no way I can deliver right now. I was like, there is no way. But later on, I'm grateful that they didn't jump the gun and had a C-section just because my baby did end up going into the NICU and there's just no way I could have taken care of him the way I did if I had a C-section, like a major abdominal surgery. So thank you for, that was the right call. But anyway, I started getting dressed like into my gown and everything and then my OB walks in and she's like, you are not supposed to get sick so quickly. And I'm like, sorry. <laughs> um, and she diagnosed me there with severe preeclampsia. So the reason why some of you were confused there, you were like, um, that should be eclampsia, right? Because you were already having seizures. Well, I had a partial seizure where like I didn't lose consciousness and I wasn't like, you know, like shaking or anything that where you like it's a full-on seizure. I had a partial seizure. So we're not, we didn't get to 
eclampsia, okay? We were at severe <laughs> preeclampsia. So she was like, I diagnosed you with severe preeclampsia. We're getting the baby out because um, she's like, I don't want you to go into, you know, like organ failure. To make sure I don't get any more seizures while I'm in labor, um, they have to put you on a magnesium drip, which stabilizes your blood pressure and just like make sure that, you know, you don't get worse while you're trying to deliver. Magnesium drips, if anybody ever says that to you, just magnesium drip. It is awful. It is, it is absolutely awful. And they were warning me, they were like, you know, our moms that have to go on a magnesium drip, they feel like very poorly, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, how, how much more poorly can it get? <laughs> so I was not ready to experience that because magnesium drip, you have on for a long time. You have it the entire time you're in the hospital. And because you're on magnesium, you have to be in the hospital for two extra days. Sup, bros? My child, my husband. Um, horrific. I hate it. <laughs> it, um, it messes up you like crazy. It makes your you, you can't control your body. You can't get up from by yourself to like use the restroom or get up in general. So you're basically just like stuck in bed. Um, it is also a muscle relaxant. Um, so that's why you can't you can't get up. Can't do anything. Um, it gives you an extremely major headache, which on top of the headache I had, it was just insane. And I think because of that, because of the amount of pressure that is on my brain, I like could not see. I couldn't see anything. And that was really, really hard because you can't really concentrate um, when like it's just everything is just out. Um, so that is not fun. Um, yeah. And then because I have to be induced, they put you on pitocin which is supposed to stimulate your contractions but when you're on a muscle relaxant <laughs> it gets it gets it's not fun um, so my labor was much longer than it was with my first baby and it was just it just felt like a lot and the entire time like I said before I was just like can, can we just have a c-section and I already said it out loud <laughs> but that was what I was thinking I'm like can we just can we just be done with this because I felt like it was just too much it was just too much and I couldn't do it it took two hours even a little over two hours to get the anesthesiologist to come in to do the epidural because they were super short-staffed everybody apparently wanted an epidural at the exact same time and when she finally came in I was ready like I was pretty much ready to push um, when she finally came in and she quickly did my epidural and like right off the bat I felt like something was off I felt lopsided but I was like I don't know if it's because I'm already feeling like total crap or what until I started like laying down and feeling my contractions and honestly like, I was already ready to push and um, I, get, I got my epidural 15 minutes before I had to push so when I laid down to push I felt that only one side of me <laughs> so half a side um which was this side actually got numb the other side i could feel everything everything and for the person who has never even thought about having an unmedicated or like pain-free birth that was another traumatic experience because when i was delivering ruslan this side i didn't feel anything but pressure this side i felt everything everything so it's just another off balance on top of that i can't see i have a major headache i'm all swollen i can't open my eyes all the way it was just it was so hard it was it, it was so hard and with solomon i loved my labor i was like after him i was like i can give birth every week i don't care that was such a cool experience right with this one, I'm not doing it anymore. I'm done. Um, it was it was very hard. Um, there was a lot of screaming and a lot of yelling, and Philip was also freaking out a little bit because he never prepared himself to like have me in pain. Um, but that was really really hard because you can't you also can't really concentrate because you feel so off where only one side of you feels everything. Um, but anyway, I gave birth. I delivered. Um, I don't think I had any tears, or if I did, I don't think I, I think she said I had a, a very little tear, um, 
but I honestly didn't even feel the stitches like I did with Solomon. I guess, <laughs> I guess the universe was like, she's had, she's had enough. Let's, she won't feel the stitches because I got stitches. I just, I don't remember. I honestly don't remember any of that. Um, but yeah. I finally gave birth to Ruslan and they gave him to me and I was just, I was so overwhelmed that I just gave him to Philippe. I was like, I can't do this. I couldn't even see him. I couldn't see him normally. And that's when, oh yeah, and that's when they announced. They were like, dad, you want to announce? And the dad is like, it's a boy. So, it's a boy. <laughs> um, I really pictured all of that very differently in my mind. I thought it would be a very peaceful experience. I'll give birth and then they will be like, who is it? And Philippe would be like, it's a boy or it's a girl, you know, but this was just like, I honestly even forgot that we don't know the baby's gender. It was just so, it was too much. It was just overwhelming. And Philip was like, it's a boy. And I did not expect it to be a boy. So it was another thing that was like shocking. Um, but of course, like he's beautiful. I, would, I wouldn't trade him for anybody else. Um, but Philip took him and then they went and like got him weighed and stuff like that and the NICU team was there as well because he was born earlier so they're making sure he's doing okay um, and when I'm seeing him, I'm seeing him perfectly fine, right? so like when they took him out and they gave him to me, he is perfectly fine he's crying, um, they took him off and they're weighing him and I'm asking him like, is everything okay? because the babies are born a little bit early sometimes they have like, you know, something's underdeveloped or things like that or they can't breathe, they're not crying um, but they're like, no, he's, he's beautiful there's nothing wrong with him but that he's born a little bit early he's smaller um, and things like that so they're checking him over there and then I'm over here and they're like, what's the baby's name? And Philip, we already agreed if it was a boy, we only had na one name and it would be Lev, um, which is literally directly mean lion in Russian. So Lev. So he's telling them, Lev, Lev. And I'm like, Philip, no, <laughs> I don't think he's a Lev. And Philip comes over and he's like, yeah, I don't think so either. So, okay, like, hey, what's the baby's name? And I'm like, I have no idea. And um, they're like, you know, kind of looking at us. And I can't look at him. I can't see him, right? So I'm holding him and I'm trying to like focus on him and I can't see him. Like it was just the most frustrating thing because you finally give birth to your baby and you just want to look at them. And I remember just being so frustrated. I'm like, I can't see. I can't see. Like it was just blurriness. And they're like, yeah, it's either the magnesium or like your blood pressure like really messed with you. Um, so like your like optic nerves and things like that. So we held off on naming him. We didn't name him until like three days later until I started getting my vision back a little bit. Um, we named him Ruslan. Um, if he's perfect. But they wheeled me off and they took Ruslan. Um, so Ruslan was with, was with us for like probably an hour. And then um, one of the nurses noticed that he had labored breathing, so like he was, um, what did they call it? Not gasping, but he was, anyway, they called it something, and my sister, she's a Nikki nurse, and when we sent her a video of him, she was like, guys, check this. Um, so they took him to the NICU to just run some tests, things like that, and I thought everything would be just fine, I thought he'd be back. So they, as soon as we went back, you know, when you go to a different room, um, that's when they took him to the NICU and they were there for a while and I wasn't allowed to leave the room because I'm, I'm still on my magnesium drip. So I'm like <laughs> a walking hazard. I can't walk. I can't do any of that. Um, so I'm in the room and Philip was allowed to go into the NICU, kind of like to see what they're doing with him. And Philip comes back and he's like, yeah, he's fine. They're just going to keep him overnight over there because he's having trouble breathing. Um, and I was like, okay, that's that sucks. But, you know, overnight is not that big of a deal. Um, and then the next day, Philip was like, can go to the NICU just fine because he can walk, but I'm not allowed to leave the room. And I asked the nurses, I'm like, can I just go be with my baby? Like, can I go see him? Can I do any of this? And not until they had like a shift change and a different provider was on staff um, that they asked, and they're like, okay, if she's in a wheelchair and she promises not to get up from the wheelchair, she can go to the she could be wheeled up to the NICU to see her baby but like I wasn't allowed to get up so I still had like all of my IVs, the magnesium drip, everything had to be like we had to like 
huddle it together and it was like a whole process to get to the NICU and I finally get down to the NICU to his room and I just see him like connected to so many wires he has a CPAP on him which is like this mask um, and there's like all these machines and I just felt I felt very guilty because I was like I'm fine and he doesn't look fine you know the last time I saw my baby he was he was just fine and then now I'm here the next day and he doesn't look fine it was a lot and when you're like <laughs> when you still can't see crap um, when you're still very much recovering from birth while very hormonal it was a very traumatic very fast 24 hours and I just seen there and he's so tiny and he's connected to all these things and they're just saying that you know his lungs are a little bit underdeveloped that he needs a little bit of help breathing because he's not he's he's basically gasping a lot like he's breathing really really fast but he's not getting enough oxygen so like we were um looking at all of his um readings and things like that and that's when like the next day my sister came and she we were allowed one visitor in the NICU so she came and she does this for a living and she was looking at things and she was able to explain it to me a little bit more where you know like he needs to slow down his breathing and his oxygen needs to go up otherwise he's just gasping for air and he's not getting the oxygen that he needs which is not good right um so he was on a CPAP for a little bit and then they were like monitoring him um and afterwards thankfully his breathing got better pretty quickly i think within like 48 hours he was off CPAP and they were monitoring him overnight to see if he would have any spells which basically like you know he won't breathe and he didn't have any spells so they completely upgraded him to like the the, the less intensive um, unit so we went to a different room and that's where we were there for we were there for eight days because they had to teach him how to eat and because he was so little he it didn't click for them yet like how you eat he wouldn't wake up for his feedings right so he had the tube going first of all at first it was in his mouth um and they would just like push the formula in um and then they put it into his nose when we started like trying to teach him how to bottle feed because you know when something is in your mouth it's really hard to take a bottle so they had it down his nose um the ng tube and we were trying to basically teach him how to eat which is <laughs> It takes a lot of patience because that was the only thing keeping us from going home. I was discharged on Sunday and he wasn't discharged until almost a week later. So when I got home, when I was discharged, I just packed my bags and I went back to thank you because I was like, I, you, your body, you physically, like, you cannot be away from your baby when you just had your baby. Like, you feel like you just need to be with him and nothing else. Like, I couldn't, I couldn't be home. I just, I left. I was in the NICU the entire time. I would come back to, like, shower. Um, and it was a really hard week. And I can't, I can't imagine parents that have to do this for months with their babies because they're born either, either very early or they're more sick. It, it, it's such a huge toll on you to be like a NICU parent because when you walk out of the hospital to go home with an empty car seat, it's it, it's it's not like a celebratory moment that you picture yourself having, and I can't even go to the place where like one parent have to go home without a baby because something happened, you know, if they lost their baby. I can't imagine doing that either. So like. It just gives you a bigger appreciation of things you just kind of feel like that happen, you know? Um, so, but we brought him home a week later. I know I'm like skipping a ton of stuff, but he's okay. Like there was nothing wrong with him, which is, praise God, honestly, there was nothing wrong with him. Um, and the reason why I didn't go in the, into an emergency C-section, as they told me that later, is he was never in distress. Like, I freaking was. <laughs> He never was in distress and they were able to calm down my blood pressure um, and my stats were pretty okay um, once they got me on the magnesium drip where they didn't think it was necessary for me to go into a c-section which again now I'm grateful for because my recovery has been so much easier and I could actually be in the NICU with my baby rather than not you know so yeah 
that is my birth story. Um, yeah, that is my birth story. Thank you guys for watching and everything is okay and we are alive and we are well. I still don't know why I had another seizure on New Year's, but we're okay. So thank you guys so much for watching. Um, if you have any questions or anything like that, uh, we're welcome to message me. Anyway, also, if monitor your blood pressure when you're pregnant. Bye.